as humans became aware of the existence of lichens and vampires, they conducted a mass purging of both species. A vampire, who wakes from a long slumber inside a research facility, goes on a quest in search of the reasons for her incarceration, and what the lingering visions she's experiencing could possibly mean. The ongoing war between lichens and vampires has lasted for centuries. Celine, a vampire, worked as a death dealer in service of a vampire elder, Victor. As one of the best in her trade, she vows to eradicate all of the lichens, or werewolves, as revenge for their eradication of her family. As luck would have it, she falls in love with a hybrid, Michael Corvin. To protect her lover, Celine ends up killing two vampire elders, Victor and Martius. The lovers have been at the center of the war due to their undying and forbidden love. Twelve years ago, humans discovered the existence of both species and began hunting them all down. Raiding every city, the humans used silver nitrate ammunition and ultraviolet rays to destroy every lichen and vampire they find. To escape the purge, the couple decide to meet on the pier and board a ship together. Celine fights her way down a high-rise building, taking the soldiers out one by one with ease. However, when she arrives at the docks, she sees men with guns ready to attack Michael. Celine calls out his name to warn him of the surrounding danger. Alerted of the armed men's presence, Michael transforms into his vampire like in hybrid form, but one man shoots him with a silver bullet, causing him to fall into the water. Celine jumps after him as bullets fly past them. She reaches Michael and tries to wake him up, but to no avail. The enemies drop a specialized UV explosive into the water, and when it explodes, the force separates the lovers as they float unconscious in the sea. Injured, Celine hears a man order the soldiers to collect their bodies, before completely losing consciousness. As years pass, Celine wakes up to chaos surrounding her. Someone activates the defrosting sequence on her cryogenic chamber and the ice starts to melt. The death dealer bangs against the glass, breaks free, and falls clothless onto the floor. Celine looks around at the unfamiliar room and wonders where she could be. Meanwhile, the people in the laboratory panic following the escape of Subject 2, who they fear has fled the facility. To add to the commotion, Subject 1, Celine, is finally dressed and breaking out of her locked room. From the main laboratory, Dr. Jacob Lane orders his men to gas her with a high dose of fentanyl to put her back to sleep. However, Celine outsmarts them when she notices the one-way glass, and smashes through the ceiling into the main laboratory. The vampire immediately apprehends one of the doctors asking where Michael is. When another doctor stabs her in the shoulder, she retaliates by breaking his arm and stabbing his head. While searching for a way out of the building, Celine takes out multiple guards using her quick speed and a small scalpel. She jumps out the window after hearing a man stop the guards from shooting her on Dr. Lane's orders, believing she'll help them track down Subject 2. After holding onto the back of a passing truck, she turns back and reads the facility's name on the side of the building, Antigen. Later, Celine breaks into a shop and grabs a trench coat. She notices a cluster of vampire and werewolf teeth for sale in a glass display case, confusing her. The vampire returns to the docks, but finds it abandoned. A guard calls her out and informs her that it's a closed area. Celine asks him how long it's been that way, and the man says it's been condemned for 12 years, when the purge began. Later, Celine telepathically connects through someone else's eyes, looking down at a mutilated man gasping in pain. Convinced it's Michael's vision, she scrambles to locate him. Meanwhile, the police surround the same mangled man that Celine saw. Detective Sebastian and his junior detective Johnson are investigating the possibility that a lichen might have been responsible. Sebastian tells Johnson that it's been years since they saw a lichen and doubts one was the perpetrator. Then, he receives a phone call regarding an incident at Antigen. Unbeknownst to them, Celine watches from up high, and descends when the detectives disperse from the scene. Among the spectators, a man with electric blue eyes notices and quietly follows her. At Antigen, Detective Sebastian arrives and asks Dr. Lane, the corporation's owner, if everything is okay since he received a witness report that something had escaped from their laboratory, which the doctor denies. He tells the detective that he would have informed the authorities of any major incident since public safety is the company's top priority. The doctor tries to elicit sympathy from Sebastian, stating that he lost his son to a lichen. Later, when Sebastian returns to his car, Johnson shows him a picture of Celine escaping the antigen building, proving that Dr. Lane was lying. Meanwhile, Celine visits the man who had let her go, asking if Subject 2 is a hybrid, which the man confirms. He also adds that she and Subject 2 are connected in some way because they have the ability to see through each other's eyes. After the man answers all her questions, the vampire ruthlessly throws him out of the building and he lands on a car in the street. As Celine leaves,
leaves, she experiences another vision of the person escaping from the police through a vent. The death dealer runs to the location, while the blue-eyed man stalks her. After entering the vent, the man loses sight of Celine and sees lichens creeping around. He immediately tries to hide, but Celine catches him. The vampire demands to know why he's following her, so David changes his eye color to show her he's also a vampire. David speaks about the current situation of the depleting numbers of vampire covens and the few remaining lichens who've resorted to lurking around the underground tunnels. During the conversation, another vision comes to Celine. This time, the person is being attacked by a couple of lichens, cornering the person to a dead end. Fearing for Michael's safety, she hurriedly runs to the person's rescue, easily defeating the werewolves. Reaching the shadowy corridor, Celine finds a girl cowering by a wall instead of Michael. David and Celine take the girl with them and the man suggests taking them back to their coven. Celine is driving the van with David in the front passenger seat, while the scared girl is in the back. Suddenly, three lichens chase after them, leaving a path of destruction in their path as they desperately try to reach the vehicle. The three werewolves reach the van despite Celine's best efforts to evade them. When one of the creatures gets inside the van and bites the girl, she transforms into a hybrid, surprising Celine. After successfully subduing their attackers, Celine has David drive the rest of the way, while she attends to the injured girl, whose wound wasn't healing. Elsewhere, Detective Sebastian is investigating Celine through photos and video surveillance footage. The girl says the doctors told her she was an orphan, but because of her psychic connection with Celine, Subject 2, or Eve, never believed any of their lies. One day, she heard of the doctor's plan to end her life and that her mother was in one of the chambers, prompting Eve to wake Celine from her slumber. Celine realizes that Eve is her daughter with Michael, and she gave birth in captivity. However, Celine feels detached from the fast pace of the unraveling information and instead coldly asks her daughter about Michael's location. Surprised by her mother's indifference, Eve tells her that she has no idea where he is, prompting Celine to forcefully access her memory by drinking her blood. Later, they enter an underground coven, and David lays Eve down on the altar, asking the others to call Olivia, a healer. An older vampire, Thomas, appears and berates David for bringing Celine to their coven. The vampire leader, and David's father, points out that Celine is the primary reason for the vampire's near extinction, because she betrayed their kind and killed two elders for a hybrid. David defends Celine by saying that their clan was the one who betrayed the death dealer. Then, Olivia arrives and hurriedly tends to Eve. Olivia tells them that the girl is weak and suggests feeding her. She offers Eve her own blood, which Eve hesitates to drink, but eventually consumes, before falling unconscious. Witnessing Eve's uniqueness, Thomas questions the girl's identity since he knows of Celine's hybrid lover. However, Celine refuses to answer and tells him she'll leave with her daughter the next day. Later, Celine mournfully considers the possibility of Michael's demise, as she remains confused about her daughter's existence. Then, David joins her and says he knew of her identity as a death dealer. Celine thanks the vampire for his help in rescuing her daughter, despite his knowledge of what she is. He asks her to help train the young vampires to protect the coven, but Celine warns him that Thomas wouldn't allow it. David believes there is a need for change to ensure their species' survival. He even asks her to take him along when they leave. Meanwhile, Eve wakes up from her slumber, and she roams around the empty hall. Thomas suddenly appears behind her, and says he knows of her true identity. Later, Thomas informs them of the lichens near extinction due to their foolish retaliation to the humans, which further convinces him to steer clear of any conflict. The two men argue, and David accuses his father of being a coward, angering Thomas. Concurrently, Eve slices her arm and watches the wounds heal quickly. When Celine enters, she immediately tells her daughter to stop what she's doing, but Eve confesses that her mother's cold treatment has hurt her. Opening up, Celine says she's still coming to terms with the fact that she has a daughter, and that Michael, the love of her life, is gone. The vampire further explains that her heart is not cold but broken, making Eve accept her mother's apology. Suddenly, a loud crash resounds through the coven, and Eve becomes alert, stating intruders have arrived. Celine tells her to stay in the locked room, as she heads out to join the other vampires. The combatant vampires gear up, under David's leadership, to anticipate the human's attack, while Thomas leads the others to safety. Celine plans to escape with Eve to lure the humans away, while David gets ready to fight. However, they are surprised to find themselves at the mercy of multiple lichens instead of humans, catching them off guard. Outnumbered, the werewolves quickly subdue the vampires. However, a few vampires manage to escape alongside David, who suffered a werewolf bite. As Celine returns with Eve, she asks for his help to protect her daughter, while she fights the remaining lichens. From a tunnel covered by a thin curtain, Celine 
Jane hears a resounding roar. A colossal shadow appears before her, and from the tunnel emerges an unnaturally gigantic werewolf. The lycan attacks Celine with its monstrous strength. The Death Dealer is able to injure the creature, but she is ultimately no match for the imposing beast. Celine falls unconscious after receiving a massive hit from the monster. Moments later, Celine wakes up and finds out that Thomas had given up her daughter to the Lycans to cease the fight. Celine tries to chase after Eve, but she's too late. Enraged, Celine tells the older vampire that Eve is the only living direct descendant of Alexander Corvinus, the founding father, and she fears the worst of what the werewolves will do to her. She adds that Thomas is the one who failed their species, because at least David knew Eve was worth dying for. She makes an incision on David's torso, inserts her hand into the cut, squeezes David's lifeless heart, and brings it back to life. David gasps awake, surprising the remaining vampires. Later, Celine holds Detective Sebastian at gunpoint, and she wonders why the man doesn't seem surprised after she tells him a vampire coven was attacked by lichens last night. Sebastian invites her into his office, telling her of his suspicion regarding the werewolf's power in the government. However, Celine, skimming the files, has a different theory and thinks Antigen might be behind everything. The two plan and gear up to save Eve from the lichens. On their way to Antigen, Celine finds out that the detective's wife was once a vampire who took her own life by basking in sunlight because of the purge. Celine now understands why the detective is sympathetic to the vampire's cause. Outside the building, Celine waltzes into the elevator as the guards panic and sound the alarm. Surprised, the vampire is attacking in daylight. Meanwhile, Dr. Lane is preparing to operate on Eve, planning to harvest her organs to use her genes to create a silver vaccine. The operation stops when Celine activates the silver gas bombs on every floor. Dr. Lane hurriedly transports the unconscious Eve and orders his son, Quint, to hunt down the vampire. She rushes to reach her daughter, while Dr. Lane and his men transport her to the van in the basement parking lot. Meanwhile, Sebastian watches the happenings through the CCTV monitors as he communicates with Celine about her daughter's whereabouts. As the fight between Lycans and Celine ignites, the communication signal between the two becomes spotty, taking down any Lycan that comes her way. While catching up to her daughter, Celine sees a cryogenic chamber in case Michael. With the imminent danger to Eve's life, Celine can only shoot at the glass to let the icy mist escape, hoping it'll effectively defrost her sleeping lover. Meanwhile, the detective is unable to get a hold of the vampire, so he grabs a rifle and drives to the basement, intending to stop the lichens. In the basement, Dr. Lane has Eve in the van and is ready to escape, when Sebastian suddenly arrives and shoots at the van's driver. Dr. Lane grabs the steering wheel and continues driving. Sebastian informs Celine that the van is on its way to parking level 1, which he immediately heads to. Elsewhere, Quint transforms into his massive super lichen form, revealing that he was the monstrous werewolf who attacked the coven. Moments later, Celine catches up to the van and overturns it using her strength. She subdues two lichens when Quint appears. As the two battle it out, Quint has a clear size advantage, while Celine tries to outwit the werewolf with her agility and combat skills. Meanwhile, Detective Sebastian finally reaches parking level 1 and shoots at Dr. Lane, who's trying to take Eve away. However, the doctor, who's already tested the silver vaccine on himself, is unbothered by the detective's ammo. The doctor throws the detective to the side with relative ease. As Dr. Lane is about to end the detective's life, he hears Eve snarling at him in her hybrid form. Meanwhile, Celine has difficulty defeating the giant beast and sees enemy reinforcements through a monitor. Concurrently, Eve is having a brutal one-on-one -on -one fight with Dr. Lane, who has also transformed into his lichen form. Suddenly, David appears, with a shotgun in hand and blasts the doctor's face. Lycan reinforcements arrive and start shooting at David, who tries to evade the gunshots. David eventually defeats them with his gun and blades. While Dr. Lane searches for Eve, she quickly hides and launches a surprise attack. She defeats the Lycan by tearing his throat with her claws. Meanwhile, Celine hides in a small corner, making it hard for Quinn to reach her. Frustrated, the werewolf transforms back to his human form to fit the space and capture Celine. Unexpectedly, Celine attacks him by plunging her hand into his stomach. He smirks at her, saying that he heals quickly. However, the vampire utters that she's counting on his quick healing ability, then throws the grenade's pin at him. Realizing that she left the explosive inside his body, Quint tries to pry open his already healed stomach, but it's too late, and he perishes from the silver grenade explosion from within. After defeating their opponents, Celine and Eve hug each other. Hearing all the commotion outside, Sebastian tells them to leave, while he distracts the police. Celine thanks the detective for his help help and goes back inside the building. Returning to where she found Michael's chamber, she sees that it's empty. All of a sudden, Eve experiences a vision 
from someone else, a view from the building rooftop. They immediately head to the location but find no one there. Knowing that both humans and lichens will be searching for Michael, Celine vows to find him first. 